toward the end of the 60s, is that when the, uh, the the rumors about you being dead surfaced? Do you remember that? Do you remember, yeah. remember how, how that started? What, what were your feelings about that? Yeah, no, what happened was we did a cover for a record called Abbey Road. The idea was to walk across the crossing, and I showed up that day with sandals, flip-flops, and so uh, it was so hot that I kicked them off and walked across barefooted. So this started some rumor that because he was barefooted, he's dead. But it was a little bit strange because people did start looking at me like, Is it, is it him or a very good double? Well, that was the idea. That was the other part of it, that there was a guy who looked like you taking your place. No, well, this is him. Or is it? I was gonna rant with you about uh, McCartney being dead. What is this all about? In October 1969, a disc jockey in Detroit received a call from a listener explaining that if some Beatles songs were listened to closely, clues would be heard. Number nine. 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 Even though there were past attempts to spread the rumor, this time it really took off. It's 22 before the hour at 1 o'clock, WABC Chime Time. I the fact that there's something very strange about the Beetle Paul. The fact that the Beetle Paul may be dead. If McCartney was killed three years ago in an auto accident and a double put in his place. Then a rumor had circulated through London that Beetle Paul McCartney had been killed in a car crash on the M1 motorway. There arose a rumor that Paul was really not Paul, but an imposter. The theory on Paul's death says he was out alone in his Aston Martin. He crashed and was decapitated. A Paul McCartney lookalike has been impersonating him ever since. The fans say they can prove it in the songs, in the jackets to the record albums, and in other places. Clues by the dozen are lurking. Three of the Beatles wear a red rose, while McCartney wears a black rose. Paul is the only one standing with his back to the camera. Inside the cover, McCartney's lookalike is wearing an armband with the letters OPD, which in England means officially pronounced dead. The McCartney uh, situation uh, is real. They replaced him with somebody special and did some plastic surgery. Calipers on the bridge of the nose will show that there were not one but two. Did the measurements and everything? My lord, there are two. Then we got Dr. Henry Truby. Dr. Henry Truby. Somebody else was singing at a time when the fans and when the label would indicate that it was Paul McCartney. Are you really telling us that the original Paul McCartney was not the later Paul McCartney, that there really was a double? It really is. It's more like it. Come on! It's the best Paul McCartney we've had. Refined, cleaned, groomed, and had more talent than the first one. It had been four years of instant success. The Beatles had become gods. You know, nobody heard anything, or not even, you know, a basic beat, I don't think. They were too busy tearing each other up. I have prepared a statement, which I will read, which has had John Lennon's absolute approval this afternoon uh, with myself by telephone. Uh, and this is as follows. The quote which John Lennon made to a London columnist more than three months ago has been quoted and represented entirely out of context. When John said the Beatles meant more to kids than Jesus, a Beatles boycott in the southern states began as the Beatles toured the U.S. for the last time in August 1966.
they burned their records and spit on their images. But before they burned the records, they had to buy them. We meant more to kids than Jesus did. I was just saying it as a fact. I was using expressions on things that I just read. The Passover plot speculates that the Bible is a hoax and that Jesus didn't die on the cross. Jesus survived, and in order to create a new religion with himself as the Messiah, he made people believe that he'd risen from the dead. He said to me once that the children of 2000 will be listening to the Beatles. By 2012, the masses would be where we are today, and Paul should be Jesus by then. On August the 29th, 1966, the Beatles took the stage for the final date of their third sellout tour of America. But this would be the last ever Beatles concert. We were just tired, you know, it had been four years legging around screaming in this mania, you know, that we weren't going to tour again. We said, well, how, what are we going to do, like announce it, the Beatles have given up tour? And we said, no, just don't say anything. But I was really too scared to walk away. I was thinking, well, this is like the end, really. You know, there's no more touring. And I was dead nervous, so I, I said yes to Dick Lester that I would make this movie with him. I went to Almeria, Spain for six weeks. Ringo came to Spain when John and I were down there. George, like I said, was doing the Indian stuff. I, I'm almost pulled with him. I don't know what he was doing. Tuesday, September 13th, 1966. The Melanie Makers Awards would be the last time a camera caught a glimpse of Paul McCartney for the next three months. Because of Paul's absence, rumors suggested he left the band and the Beatles were breaking up. Beatles manager Brian Epstein had to make a statement on October 3rd denying that Paul had left the band but confirming they would never perform live in concert ever again. The Beatles have kept pretty much to themselves in the last seven or eight months. There have been thousands of rumors about their breakup. They'd say they're not going to tour anymore. They're not going to travel around. Hey, can I what? Uh, are the Beatles going to go their own ways in 1967? They could be, you know, on our own as a gather. We're always involved with each other, whatever we're doing. I mean, do you foresee a time when, in fact, the Beatles won't be together and that you'll all be on your no, own? No, no. Do you get, to, you, have you got tired of each other? No. Obviously, by some madman. We 
sit out strong and feel forever we were convinced a few lads had discovered the prophet's message. <laughs> When the Liverpool people came here to London, they brought with them the freedom, that the money they've made. A centre is what is, is needed, that's what the bookshop here in Indica was designed. But the bookshop wasn't enough. A newspaper seemed to be the only way to get them all to meet. One of the staff members and a co-founder held a competition in the first issue of the newspaper. His name was Ion Iarkamo, apparently a Polish filmmaker. The same Ion Iarkamo who ran this ad in the next issue. The same Ion Iarkamo who contributed to the Church of the Final Judgment and their magazine, The Process. The same Ian Iarkamo who engaged his friend Yoko Ono to perform an exhibition at his own Indica Gallery. She was having a show at this gallery. So anyway, I finally got to this show and uh, she had all these things on, like all these like hammer nail things and, and that clock there where you listen to it to a st step ago. All the things, there, there was this ladder and a thing on the ceiling. So I climbed the ladder and on the ceiling it said, yes, Oh, but he said yes, and that was enough, you know. And then she came up and said uh, she didn't know who I was. They didn't really know about us. No. Yoko came around to my house. She knew who the Beatles were. She because had met him. She met you. Yeah. She knew of the Beatles. They didn't really know about us. I don't know. You but know, of course, I mean, I, if she I, knocked I, on your door, she knew you were a Beatle. The same Ian Ekromo that wrote paperback writer. The same Ian Iorcamo, whose name backwards sounds like, listen, Ian Iorcamo, Ian Iorcamo, Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney. So Maya was anyway to turn me on to a lot of that International Times, yeah. Evergreen, all those little things. There's lots of very far out. And we used to do a lot of that. It, it, this means that someone like Paul McCartney is on the scene and have supported it in both direct and indirect ways and will probably say we have the same concept of freedom as he does. I all found a certain similarity in their aims, more intimate and direct. So, way before John met Yoko and got avant-garde, I was like the avant-garde London bachelor with, with Miles, my pad in St. John's Wood. I was making like eight movies and we were showing them to Antonio and me. I was in quite a sort of heavy avant-garde trip. I would sit with Burroughs in a basement and I remember sitting around with Burroughs, you know, to do little tapes and backward crazy stuff. Sell out your sons forever. It looks like a funeral. For the cover, we came up with a list of our heroes, the ones we really liked. On the grave is a left-handed base in flowers. The old Beatles stand somberly in grief, and like a resurrection, the new Beatles. A hand, like a halo, appears over Paul's head, and just behind the hand is the writer Stephen Crane, who wrote the tale the Open Boat, which is about four men who went out on a mission, but only three survived. There's a white car again on the doll's lap. And on the other side is a blood-stained glove from someone who appears dark and dead. On the inside cover, Paul is wearing a label on his left shoulder. It appears that it reads OPD, which in England means officially pronounced dead. On the back of the album, Paul is the only one standing with his back to the camera. George is pointing at a line from, she's leaving home.
According to the rumor, the day and time Paul was officially pronounced dead. If you were to ask anyone who is the voice of the Beatles, the name would be Derek Taylor. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes Derek Taylor. Yes, yeah, sure. Why the preoccupation with exotic symbolisms of death? These, these are not things that we are aware of. What about the uh, Paul spelled out on the Sgt. Pepper's album, the guitar in flowers? That's the part of that kind of guitar there? Yes. On the grave? Yes, it is a grave. Because we are clearly dense in that we cannot see the symbolism. According to the credits, the bass drum was designed by Joe F. Grave. It's just impossible to find any trace of him. He simply does not exist. Epgrave may be a hybrid of epitaph and grave. The cryptic word games are the immediate extension of Lewis Carroll's famous poem, Jabberwocky, which shows that in word are very different meanings if one knows how to decode them. The secret code of Jabberwocky. Lonely becomes one 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 X. Hearts becomes he die. One 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 X. He die. Or stated differently, eleven Roman numeral nine. He die. According to the rumor, he died November 9. Who died? Follow the arrow. Paul died. Alistair Crowley, the man who called himself the Beast 666, writer, philosopher, founder of Thelema, cult leader, Freemason, and magician, wrote the book Magic in which he describes how to communicate on a subliminal level by speaking backwards in order to gain power over others. Let him learn to write backwards with either hand. Let him learn to walk backwards. Let him constantly watch, if convenient, cinemograph films and listen to phonograph records reversed. Two photographs of Crowley were planned for the Sgt. Pepper cover. But since one of the photos of a younger Crowley resembled Paul, Crowley appeared on the cover only once. Or did he? Alistair Crowley died in 1947, 20 years before Paul sang, It was 20 years ago today! Was Alistair Crowley the real Sgt. Pepper? The inside cardboard contained Sgt. Pepper, the Beatles, military stripes, and a fake mustache. Sergeant Pepper's lonely, Sergeant Pepper's lonely, Sergeant Pepper's lonely, Hearts Cut Band. And runs of Pepper's Dust, 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 and runs of Pepper's Dust. It was a fake mustache. I decided to write a secret little message to the end of the record. So we went to the studio and did a run-out groove. It laughed for one second, but it took the whole evening to get it right. Pepper is 
Turn it around. You're the way around, you know. We'll all be magic Superman. That was it. He'll be over soon, they said. Now they've lost themselves instead. Please don't be long. Please don't you be very long. Please don't be long, or I may be asleep. Molly, Molly, The whole thing was Crowley saying, do what thou wilt. You know, we're all sons of the magician. Roll up, roll up, roll up, roll up, roll up by the mystery door. Roll up, that's an invitation. Roll up by the mystery door. Roll up, to make a reservation. Roll up by the mystery door. 24-page full cover picture book. Put a mirror across the tour on the front, and it says, look. Look in the book. Above the clouds, in a land that no one knows, live four or five magicians who spend their days casting wonderful spells. Paul wears a black carnation. I had a black carnation because they'd run out of red ones. And I said, all right, I'll have a black one, I'll have whatever you've got. Paul's blood-stained shoes. The bass drum contains a message too. Love the three Beatles. above Paul's head as a blessing over the dead man. Ringo, the fun one. George, the quiet one. John, the smart one. Paul, the cute one. Turning it 90 degrees makes it a skull. Same with the back cover. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Paul above a sign with the text, I was, maybe alluding to the being I was who allegedly dictated the book of the law to Crowley. Is the time of the law is man? John. When we did Magical Mystery Tour, I actually put on the walrus mask. The one on that wall all swaying happened to be me with the walrus thing up there. Just because I said I am the walrus, it must mean I am God or something. I always had this image of the walrus and the god, but it was all, you know, I loved it. Well, here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. I am the walrus. It's one of those that has enough little biddies going to keep you interested even a hundred years later. I am he as you are, he as you are, me and we are all together. Let him practice speaking backwards. Thus, for I am he, let him say he am I. I am he and he am I. Villain.
and take my purse. If ever thou wilt thrive, bury my body. Oh, untimely death. Death. Is he dead? Sit you down, Father. Rest you. I know thee well. Uh, it's a mystery to me. <laughs> da -da -da -da. See ya. Paul McCartney and actress Jane Asher began dating in 1963. The pair got engaged in December 1967. I was at the engagement party for Jane Asher and Paul McCartney. So here's the party, all right, and uh, the rock and rollers are there, and yet the Paul McCartney, uh, looking a little bit different under the eyes, he looks a little gaunt, and I'm there, and I'm looking, and I'm saying, why isn't, uh, why aren't they together? He's over there with this girl with a camera. Oh, well, that's Linda Eastman. She was on the tour with him. That's his girlfriend. What do you mean girlfriend? He's supposed to be engaged to Jane. No, that's not the same McCartney. It's not the same guy. But this is not the same McCartney. If Sergeant Pepper were the funeral, then the White Album would be the coffin, and the lyrics sheet, the hymna. was Paul and we had a great giggle you know saying yeah let's do that let's put this line in because everyone is going to read into it it's going to go crackers <laughs> the accompanying poster is a collage of photos one photo in particular, according to the rumor, grabs the attention. It's supposed to be the imposter before the makeover. The imposter. The white car again. Number nine, and the underman, and the underman. My wings are broken, and so is my head. Oh, oh, I told him I saw him he had better get to somewhere because his lungs are gone, and he better go to see a sit. Number nine, and the underman, and the underman. Yeah, it was what must we think of me? Sure. What must we think of me? And you know, it was, gonna, it was gonna be like the first thousand that got it. Number nine. This is the next set of what? Yeah, number nine. Yeah, you know, number nine. Always revealing. Charles Manson managed to position himself as a guru. He had quite a lot of followers, mostly young American girls. The jury in his murder trial found he had brainwashed four people to launch an attack inside Doris Day's house and brutally murder everyone inside. The house was rented by Roman Polanski and his wife, Sharon Tate. Sharon and four friends in the house that evening were killed. The jury held that Manson was responsible for the murders, even though he didn't personally participate in them. Manson blamed the Beatles. Charlie got all his beliefs from two places. The Bible and the Beatles. The White Up. They believe the Beatles are talking directly to him. Revolution number nine. In the Bible, man. In the Bible. Check it out. Check it out. Revelation number nine. See the part about the four angels. Their faces were as the faces of men. They had hair as the hair of women. The Beatles, man. Elder Skelter. But you ain't no dad.
He's a child of the state, made by us. Everyone says, you feel no remorse. I said, can't you understand I'm not guilty of anything? He'd read a lot of biblical stuff into us. Is the Beatles responsible? I don't remember it all, I must say. Particularly some of those dark nights in L.A. You know, you just sometimes fall out of a car into a, a room. It would be very dark. I'm not sure if I remember it. Then, then, then later, I, I can't remember, you know, we were all just a bit down, you know. One of those houses, like, you know, Doris Day's house or whatever it was. Doris Day's son. Barry Melcher. Record producer Terry Melcher and Paul McCartney had worked together and knew each other very well. It's a big record producer. Him and Dennis Wilson are going to make Charlie a star. Terry Melcher came to me. I didn't come to Terry Melcher. Terry told friends he introduced Paul to Manson on June 22, 1968 at the home of Mamas and Papas, John Phillips, and that the two talked all evening. Maybe this explains why some of the lyrics on You Never Give Me Your Money were written on a door at Spawn Ranch where Manson and his family were staying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All good children go to almost a year before Abbey Road was released. I'm a real person inside. I'm not a phony. Yellow submarine, yeah, you know. Submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. We all live in... In the beginning of the animated film, Yellow Submarine, this gravestone appears. Number 49, four, nine. Paul, four letters. McCartney, nine letters. Here lie buried. Number 49, Paul McCartney. Fred gets into a spooky building to catch up with the Beatles. Just park it here. Right then, let's get this missile ship safe. A couple of seconds later, there are obviously five Beatles. Two of Paul and the three others. Two three, resembling the number 23 on the front cover. Height is for Harry, E is for Urgent, L is for Lovely. P is for goodbye. P is for goodbye. Singing, one, two, three, ha! One, two, three, four, can I have a little more? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I love you. Together now. All 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 together If this were a funeral possession, John would be the holy one. Ringo, the undertaker. Paul, barefoot and out of step, the dead man. And George, the grave digger. And there in the background is a white car, a beetle. Like more wizards. On the back are eight dots to the left of the Beatles. If you draw a line straight through all the dots, it reads three Beatles. Hidden in the girl's elbow is the profile of a young Paul McCartney. McCartney.
dance at the album, it looks like the four Beatles or whoever walking it off fully dressed. Paul's idea of being different is to look almost straight, but just have his ear painted blue. That's his little gimmick, that's all. They're normally rubbish, those things. You know, it's like me going across that crossing on Abbey Road with no shoes on. It was a hot day. Did you fit him with the suit he was wearing on the cover of Abbey Road? He came in here without shoes on, so when he fitted the suit... Honest, honest, that's all it was, but some DJs got hold of it and whipped it up. A rumor had circulated through London that Beatle Paul McCartney had been killed in a car crash on the M1 motorway. Well, basically, not quite. thing about Paul McCartney being dead. Yeah. And I was wondering how much of it was planned and how much was planned by you. It would have nothing to do with me. There is a rumor that he is dead actually, but the first I heard about it was in the press, you know. Uh, or from those I don't know how it happened. It's a mystery to Paul, it was a mystery to me. None of us knew what it was about or whatever. But of course they credited to me or Paul saying, you know, that it was publicity seeking and we did it. Following the rumors spread in October 1969, special magazines were printed and memorial records appeared on the radio. At the end of Strawberry Fields, John says I buried Paul. Brother Paul, I'm crying. St. Paul, performed by Detroit singer Terry Knight, was the most famous Paul is Dead song. In May 1969, five months before the rumor started spreading, the song was released in Detroit already. The record label states that the song was published by Macklin Music. That's John Lennon and Paul McCartney's publishing firm. St. Paul would turn out to be the only non beatles song ever published in their catalog. same month, New Zealand singer Shane Haynes performed the same song and it became a huge hit. When Shane's cover of St. Paul reached number one in New Zealand in August 1969, Paul McCartney sent his best wishes via telegram. It was too far out for us to have thought of it, you know. And it wasn't a very, I don't know, it was a peculiar thing. I don't know what it was about. In April 1970, Paul released his first solo album. They say life is a bowl of cherries, and the album cover shows a spilled bowl of cherry. The documentary film and album, Let It Be, were released. On the album cover, all the Beatles' photos have white backgrounds. Except Paul. Paul's background is blood red. Red. Originally, the cover photos were in black and white. This is roll 29, slate 23, 27. This boy dies, you're going to stop it. 
you but it's going to be it such an incredible thing like in 50 years time you know they broke up because yoko sat on an amp but see john kept bringing this girl and all. there was very few things that happened to beatles that weren't really well thought out by us whether to do it or not and you know what what reaction and would it last forever This is actually a beetle white fixing the tea for one of about four ex people. Stab three, stab three, stab three, stab three, stab three. So Sergeant Pepper took you by. second solo album, Ram, are the initials L-I-L-Y. And almost 40 years later, in Paul's The McCartney Years release, let's have little hidden things for fans. McCartney created wings. That's a nice image. Wings. 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 It lasted nine years. Percy Thrillington is one of a handful of albums Paul recorded without using the McCartney name and fame. Percy Thrillington, there's a lot more going on than you see. People don't know it goes a lot deeper than Percy Thrillington. The name of the imposter is rumored to be Bill, short of William. There's evidence that Paul McCartney called himself Billy Martin. But he referred to himself by lots of aliases. Apollo C. Vermouth, Bernard Webb, Clint Hamigan, Percy Thrillington, the fireman, Ia Irkimo. Bill seems to return, though. Why were the Beatles originally considering naming the Abbey Road album Billy's Left Boot? Why did Paul invent the name Billy Shares on the Sgt. Pepper album? Why did Paul design a hidden message, Bill, on the DVD release, The Space Within Us? Why was Paul introduced as William in the control room scene of his autobiographical motion picture, Give My Regards to Broad Street? You know, William? Oh, great. Wonderful. Uh, you know, William? Oh, great. Wonderful. Uh, you know, William? Uh, oh, great. Billy Shears. Paul is dead. You know, Paul, it's his humor, you know. I don't know. The Fireman, another secret project. Anthology 2 was ready for release in February 1996. Two and a half million copies were loaded onto trucks and were about to leave the factory heading for the stores. Paul McCartney demanded they change direction at the last minute. 
Instead of heading to the stores, they were returned, and all of them burned. Paul paid $12 million to have them destroyed. Why did they do it? I don't know, really. I just had to. The official explanation was that two songs had to change place. Looking back, looking back, retrospective, retrospective. Well, what is the most unusual um, legend or rumor you've heard about yourself? Oh, um, I can't think actually. Yeah, it's, it's been a long. Um, I really can't think. and creation in the backyard. Died in a car crash on a fatty cong. You figure it out. That's called an ambigram. But we were just goofing around. Sir George Martin, the producer, announced that there is a secret code on love. A secret message confirming that the other secret messages are there. Sir George Martin's coat of arms is rather interesting. It features a zebra perhaps referring to the zebra crossing at Abbey Road, an ancient religious symbol known as a soul catcher. When you start tampering with beetle material, you're tampering with the Holy Grail. The shield references the beetles as stag beetles, but only three beetles. Why? The new album is called Memory Almost Full. There's a rumor that's an anagram of for my soulmate LLM, Linda Louise McCartney. I was going to put little clues, but then hiding little sort of words. And it was going to be some sort of hidden message. The king of Cosmania. You see, it's all very clever. People don't want to know 
what the truth is because they could never, ever handle it. They would be too devastated. And that's why I've stayed quiet. And I have a box of evidence that is going to a certain person should anything happen to me. This evidence is against a certain party that behaved in a terrible way. Something so awful happened. Um, someone I'd loved for a long time, I found out, had betrayed me immensely. And I don't mean infidelity or anything like that. Like, beyond belief. People don't want to know what the truth is because they could never, ever handle it. They would be too devastated. Is it criminal? Is it something up like that? I can't say it. Fireman likes YouTube. At the very end of the album, there is one second of noise. But it was a little bit strange because people did start looking at me like... Is it? Is it him? Yeah. Or a very good double? Well, that was the idea. That was the other part of it, that there was a guy who looked like you taking your place. No, well, this is him. Oh, I try and sort of pretend I'm not him. So, you know, I feel like it's going to justify living, you know, which is a bit of a piss up because I don't really want to have to sit around and justify this. But there are lots of things that haven't come out. You know, I mean, there was a period a few years ago when I was dead. Dead, you know, Paul was dead. I want to ask you about that. Are, are you... No, I'm not actually dead, no. Not actually. Just a good, uh, replica. Just a good, uh, replica. The two people closest to the Beatles were their personal assistants, Neil Espinal and Mal Evans. Neil died in 2008, after 40 years as head of Apple. Maybe he never wrote a book, but if he had, Neil said it wouldn't be known to the public before at least four years after his death, or the year 2012. He was the roadie, but he really was the rock. Mal was their mountain. Mal was a big guy who followed Paul everywhere. If anybody could tell the full story about what happened to Paul, it would be Mal. If Mal had written a book, we might learn why Paul and Mal left England in October 1966 and drove through Europe to Spain for a flight to Nairobi, Kenya. This 8mm film was made by Mal Evans on the trip. In Kenya, apparently the two traveled to the Kishi Highlands, perhaps to experience how the natives there live. After a few days, they went to a hospital where Paul apparently needed treatment. Ten days later, Mal took him on safari. And then on November 19th, they returned to London. Mal went straight to Paul's house on Cavendish Avenue and immediately fired Paul's loyal longtime butler, George Kelly, forcing him out of the house. George Kelly never saw Paul again. Paul and Mal Evans come up with this idea of Sergeant Pepper. I know Sergeant Pepper fixing a hold with Paul. It was at a point when he was living in his house in London. His housekeeper had left, and I, I lived with him for four months. Mm -hmm. And on top of the house, he had a small music room, you know. And uh, he used to sit on the piano, and that's when we wrote Sergeant Pepper. A 
On January 5th, 1976, Mel was on the phone with his good friend from the Beatles days. Mel told him he had worked out some problems with Paul and that he would be receiving royalties for all the songs he'd written. He sounded worried. He said, Paul and I have just worked out some problems and he's going to give me credit for some of the things I wrote with him. Mel Evans had almost finished his book, Living the Beatles Legend. If anything happens to me, please make sure the book gets published. Four hours later, Mel Evans was killed by a police patrol led by former Kennedy investigator Charles Higby. The official police justification for killing Mel was that he was standing and waving an air rifle. Please make sure the book gets published. The manuscript which lay inside a locked suitcase disappeared. This suitcase is considered the holy grail of Beatles historians. The suitcase disappeared. Now it looks like somebody found it. Now we're there. He was in Nairobi for crazy. Teeny Lucifer, I'll sing you now. 